next kind of curve we're going to parameterize is an implicit curve in 2D. Now this usually means going angular. Notice it doesn't say going polar, it says going angular. And not to repeat myself a hundred times, too late, a curve needs one parameter. I want to emphasize here that parameterizing is not a change of variables. So it's not like we're going rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. We're searching for a parameter. That's what we're doing. We're going to start with the standard implicit curve. There it is. x squared plus y squared equals 1. And the first thing you should say to yourself is, not that it's a circle, but where is the interval? We said we always had to have an interval. No interval usually means that we're looking at a closed curve. So we're going to have to find our interval, the start point and the end point, and see that they go around exactly once. Okay, and we will remember again here, because this is a very short problem, that the interval of the parameter determines both the direction and the endpoints of the curve. So how do we start this? We say to ourselves, it's a circle. Not only is it a circle, it's a unit circle. And not only that, but we should remember that this actually should have a square here to tell us how much r is. So in this case, r is equal to 1. The radius of our circle is 1. And perhaps you remember from your, in your first classes in trig that a point on the unit circle as a radius of 1, that's no problem, and if this is our angle here, then what we get is that the x is cosine of the angle and the y is sine of the angle. Now, usually you write the angle as theta, but because we're using a parameter t always, but you can use a different one, you can use theta or phi, we're going to write t here, and then it, of course we get x equals our radius, which is 1, times cosine of our parameter, t, which is our angle here, and y equals the radius again, 1 times sine of t. Look, a parametrization. And we can see from our picture that t starts at 0, and in order to get all the way around the circle exactly once, starting at this point, we need t to be from 0 to 2 pi. Now we check. At t equal to 0, what do we get? So let's do our check. At t equal to 0, we have how much is x and y? x is 1 times cosine of 0, which is 1, and y is 1 times sine of 0, which is 0. Where's that point? Right here. So that's our starting point, and if you check some more, you'll find it goes around, and exactly once from t between 0 and 2 pi. So our parametrization of the unit circle is this information right here. When we finish drawing this, our next problem will be to do a circle that's off-center with a different radius and then an ellipse. Those are the most common implicit curves that we get, but we will do another one too. Let's see this in GeoGebra. So the first thing we do is come down to the input bar, click in there, and input our implicit function. GeoGebra now takes implicit functions, so x squared plus y squared equals 1. There's our circle. Let's make it thick and round. There we go. Now let's define our newly defined implicit function. So click again in the input bar. Curve. This is the one we want. Expression. Our x was cosine of t. Tab, sine of t. Our parameter is t. Our start value is 0. And our end value is 2 times pi. When we hit enter, our red circle should turn black. It does, so we're good. Let's move this over so we can see that we're going to 2 pi. And now, what we really want to see is not only that our parameterization is good, but that our interval is good. 
So how do we do that? We take the slider tool and make a slider for T. So we're going to call it T. It's going to go from 0, tab over, erase 5, 2 times pi. That's good, so let's click on Apply. And now we want a point on our circle that is at T equal to 1. So we come down in the input. We're going to call our point capital A. What's the name of our parametric function? Little a. So we're still in the input bar. Little a of t. This parameterization has two coordinates. So this point should have two coordinates, and it should be on our circle. Hit enter. There it is. t equal to 1, remember, is the radian value, because we're going from 0 to 2 pi, of this angle here. But the important part is that if we go from t equal to 0, there's our start point, and move our slider all the way around, it goes around exactly once and ends at 2 pi. So not only is our parameterization good, our interval is good.